I'm Janet Fletcher. I'm a food writer in California and the publisher of Planet Cheese, a weekly blog e-newsletter. I uh, am also a volunteer with a grassroots movement called Victory Cheese. You have, may have been hearing about it lately. Victory Cheese is a, is a way of bringing people together who are in the cheese business or great supporters of cheese and recognize that a lot of our current um, uh, problems are greatly affecting uh, cheese makers, dairy farms, cheese sellers, uh, distributors. So Victory Cheese is a way of bringing some attention to the issues around uh, American cheese and helping keep moving cheese through the pipeline. So I, along with uh, many other people, have put together a collection of cheeses that I'm calling a Victory Cheese Box. Uh, I've done 12 of them, 12 uh, Victory Cheese Boxes, all of them different themes, and I Gourmet is my partner in this. Uh, I received your uh, West Coast Gems Victory Cheeses in this. Uh, wet muslin bag from iGourmet. I hope they arrived cool like mine did. Uh, iGourmet is experts at shipping, which is why they're a great partner for me on this Victory Cheese uh, program. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about the West Coast Gem collection that you bought so that when you're ready to taste your cheeses, you'll understand a little bit more about them before you taste. So let's see. Let's start with the freshest one and then move to the, the most mature one because that's the way you should taste from mild to strong. Uh, young to old. So we're going to start with this beautiful fresh uh, cheese from Penny Royal Farm, which is in California, Northern California in the Anderson Valley, which is wine country. Uh, this is a fairly new operation run by two young women and they have about 20 sheep and 100 goats. This is a farmstead cheese. They're using only their own milk. And so in the spring and early summer, when they do have some sheep milk, they mix it in with the goat's milk to make this lychee. Uh, later in the year, like late fall, um, winter, they don't have any sheep's milk, so lychee will, at that point, be 100% goat's milk. But this version that you have has some sheep's milk in it. Very young cheese. It's only like two or three days old. Cheese doesn't get much younger than this. It's, it is a milk that's pasteurized, cultured, allowed to culture very slowly for a couple of days. It's drained in a bag and then uh, when it's uh, scoopable, they add salt and they put it in tubs. And you will, it doesn't have a rind, you're going to note that it's, when you taste it, it's lemony. It's, um, it tastes like the best cream cheese you ever had. It's very fluffy and not, it doesn't have that dense, sticky texture that goat cheeses sometimes have. It, it cleans up very quickly in your mouth. I love it as it is. I love it, um, you know, spread on a bagel with smoked salmon. It's great with uh, just some olive oil and cracked black pepper on it. And sometimes what I like to do is to put it in a, in a little ramekin that I can put into the oven. Here I put some olive oil um, on it and some little thyme uh, blossoms from my garden. I'm going to stick it in the oven and at the end of this little segment we'll pull it out and see what happens when you warm up this lychee. Be right back. So uh, lychee is one you want to eat. Uh, don't let it sit around. Once you open the tub, you really want to eat it within, I would say, two or three days. It's going to start to get just lose some of that fluffiness and that beautiful, fresh taste. So our next cheese is also from California, not far from the Anderson Valley, uh, where lychee is made. This is from the Casio Valley Cheese, a uh, creamery that's maybe 10 years old. And this is their newest cheese. It's called Tomino, T-O-M-I-N-O. -O. Like the lychee, it's a farmstead cheese, uh, but it's 100% uh, cow's milk. Uh, the, the Lafranchi family is a third generation dairy family in West Marin, California, and uh, they have only cows, organic, uh, organic cow's milk. And the, the Lafranchis are, it's an interesting story because they are, uh, as I said, third generation. Their grandfather immigrated with like $30 in his pocket from uh, the Italian speaking part of Switzerland in north, um, you know, northwest Switzerland near the Italian border in a little valley called the Valle Maggio, Maggia. And uh, he, he immigrated to Marin County, started a dairy farm, and his son kept the dairy farm going, and then 
the next generation, the guys that I know, decided they wanted to turn some of that milk into cheese and add some more value to it, basically try to make a more profitable business. So they went back to the Valle Maggia in Switzerland, found, tasted around, found some cheeses they love, learned who the cheesemaker was, and then asked that cheesemaker if he would come back to California with them and help them create a line of cheeses modeled after the Swiss, uh, the Italian Swiss ones that they're, you know, had been part of their family heritage. So uh, that's what they've done. They make several different cheeses, all of them quite tasty and well made. Uh, the Tomino is a little different. It's a hybrid cheese. I'm, I'm very happy when I pick it up and I see how squishy it is because that tells me it's getting nice and ripe. It's kind of like a, a very ripe peach. And uh, this cheese, when it's very young, is going to be firm, like when it's two or three weeks old. But it's released at about five weeks when it starts to get soft. It gets even better for two or three more weeks. And inside, it's going to taste like mushrooms and it's going to have a very buttery, supple, silky taste. Uh, when it's super ripe, it's gonna run, but I think here we're gonna be able to get a nice kind of camembert-like uh, slice out of it with camembert-like um, mushroom and yeast uh, notes. But this actually has a, a what uh, I would call a double rind because underneath this white mold is a reddish rind that they, uh, the cheesemaker achieved by washing this washing the young wheels with salt water, with brine, this reddish rind go, grows, and then the white rind goes on top of that. So it's, a, it's, an interesting, um, it's an interesting original cheese, and I know you're gonna enjoy that one. Lastly, we have a cheese from Oregon, from Southern Oregon, uh, the coastal town of Bandon, and it has an interesting story too, because uh, Bandon, it's dairy country. Uh, there's, it's kind of a warm coastal Oregon, lots of great pasture for cows. And uh, there was for a long time in the town of Bandon, the Bandon Cheese Factory. And um, a young man named Brad Cinco kind of grew up in the factory. His dad managed it. He, Brad learned how to make cheese there. And then his dad sold it uh, to a much larger creamery that pretty quickly shut it down not only shut it down, they, uh, they, just, they demolished it. So for the longest time, for like 10 years, Bandon just had this gaping, ugly hole in the middle of town. Uh, well, Brad went up to, uh, to Washington State and he started making cheese with Beecher's in Seattle. He made Beecher's, he developed Beecher's recipes for its fabulous cheddar, award-winning cheddars. Uh, Brad became quite like a rock star cheesemaker up at Beecher's. But then he learned about somebody who was going in Bandon, going to develop that spot where the Bandon Cheese Factory had been. Uh, he was recruited to come back to Bandon, his hometown, help develop, uh, they don't call it the Bandon Cheese Factory, they call it now Face Rock Creamery, but it's in the site of that Bandon Cheese Factory where he grew up and learned to make cheese. So Brad has come home again uh, to Bandon at Face Rock Creamery. He's making fabulous cheddars. This one is his flagship. It's, um, it's, it's, it's called Cloth Bound Cheddar, and you can see on the outside it has a, a cloth wrap. It's not waxed. It has this um, cheesecloth wrapping on the outside, and that allows the cheese to breathe, to have air exchange as it ages. So you get uh, those kind of classic English cheddar smells of nuts and candle wax, grass, and uh, I, Brad also has a little secret, although he tells everybody, um, that he, he doesn't just use straight cheddar cultures. He also uses some alpine cultures that you might use if, uh, if you were making Gruyere, and that gives a more mellow taste, a more nutty aroma, and uh, it's, I think you're going to find that when you taste this. It's not a sharp cheddar. It's quite a mellow, nutty, uh, buttery cheddar. Very delicious, you're gonna love that. Let's pick, let's get our lychee out of the oven and see how it looks. So I love to do this for an appetizer, just with some crostini and this nice warm, uh, it's now like more spreadable and oh, yummy, luscious. 
I might put some uh, cherry tomatoes on top of that or just uh, some good, nice cracked black pepper. So that's something you can do with lychee. I hope you'll enjoy your West Coast Gems collection. I hope you'll look uh, on the iGourmet site at some of the other uh, Victory Cheese box collections curated by Planet Cheese. There are a dozen and they are all differently themed and I hope you'll enjoy all of them.